Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. So, let us uh, continue with the endocrine system which we shall consider the next gland that is the adrenal glands. Okay, now, these particular adrenal glands, why it is known as glands? That is because these are fed in nature okay, and these are also known as suprarenal glands, okay, suprarenal in something which is present superior to the kidneys. As you can see these are the paired kidneys, just superior to that is located the adrenal glands. So, on each kidney the adrenal gland is present. So, how many adrenal glands will be there? Yes, there are two, the left adrenal gland and the right adrenal gland. Okay, and as we have seen that the kidneys are retroperitoneal in nature that is it is covered by the peritoneum only on the anterior surface right. So, it is present in between the peritoneum and the posterior wall of the abdominal cavity correct. So, in the same way the adrenal glands these are also retroperitoneal in nature and have a flattened pyramidal shape. Okay, now, coming to the dimensions of this particular gland, it is 3 to 5 centimeter in height, 2 to 3 centimeter in the width and little less than 1 centimeter in the thickness. Okay, so, these are flattened in nature okay, and the mass of this particular gland is 3.5 to 5 grams. Okay. So, as the gland develops during the embryonic life. Okay, so, as the embryo it develops the adrenal glands which are formed they differentiate into two structurally as well as functionally distinct regions. Okay, so, peripheral region that is known as the adrenal cortex. So, cortex word means the rind of bark right. So, we have seen that cerebral cortex what does it mean? It is a part of the cerebrum which is present in the periphery right. So, similar kind of arrangement is seen. So, the peripheral structure that is known as the adrenal cortex. Okay, so, this portion it is actually the major portion of the gland. This okay, so major portion of the gland is occupied by the adrenal cortex it forms about 80 to 90 percent of the gland and at, at the center of these adrenal cortex is located the adrenal medulla. So, the middle portion of the gland is known as the adrenal medulla. Okay, so, you can uh, you know uh, correlate this with an egg the egg yolk the yellow which is present in within the egg it is the adrenal medulla and the egg white the white portion of the egg that is the adrenal cortex. Of course, the shape is not like the egg, but you can you know correlate these two arrangement of these two regions in the adrenal gland okay? and the outer region of the adrenal gland it is covered by a capsule. It is a connective tissue capsule which surrounds the entire gland okay. and these are richly supplied by the blood vessels. So, it is highly vascularized in nature. So, it will produce the hormones and it will secrete them into the blood vessels. Okay. Now, what is the function of this adrenal cortex? So, it is producing the steroid hormones. You know steroid hormones are essential for life. Supposing if this adrenal cortex if it is damaged what will happen? It will not be able to synthesize these steroid hormones. So, complete loss of these adrenocortical hormones may even lead to death because of dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. Okay. So, if the immediate replacement of these hormones is not given the person may even die. Okay, we will see why because it is regulating the 
level of water and the electrolytes in the body. So, it helps in electrolyte balance or the water balance. Okay. Then the middle portion that is the adrenal medulla, it produces three catecholamines. Remember catecholamines C A. So, these are the catecholamines are the amines in nature, right? We have seen. Okay, these are acting as neurotransmitters as well, right? So, these catecholamines they act as hormones also. So, we have come across these catecholamines in the types of neurotransmitters, right? So, there are three catecholamines that is norepinephrine, epinephrine and a small amount of dopamine is also released by the adrenal medulla. Now, coming to the adrenal cortex. So, we will see into which regions this adrenal cortex is divided into and what are those different hormones which are produced and what are their actions and how their release is regulated. Okay, now, this adrenal cortex it is divided into three zones okay, this one this region. So, this is shown over here. So, the subdivisions of this gland is uh, depicted in this particular picture as you can see that the outer region that is the capsule this is the capsule zoom it for you ok. So, this region is the capsule the outer connective tissue layer okay. and just towards the interior side as we move towards the interior side the adrenal cortex is divided into three distinct region. Okay. These are known as the zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata is the second layer and the third one is the zona reticularis. Okay. The one which is closer to the capsule that is outermost layer that is zona glomerulosa, the middle layer zona fasciculata and the one which is closer to the adrenal medulla that is the adrenal medulla that layer is known as zona reticularis. So, these are the three regions of the adrenal cortex. So, let us consider all of these one by one. Okay. So, the outermost layer is known as zona glomerulosa. Zona means belt and glomerul means little ball we have seen. Okay. So, this, this is known as zona glomerulosa. Now, the cells in this particular region, these are closely packed together and they are arranged in spherical clusters and arched columns okay, so as we can see over here very clearly okay closely packed cells which are arranged in the form of columns right in this particular region okay so that is zona glomerulosa the outermost layer of the adrenal cortex now this particular region secretes and hormones called as mineralocorticoids you know why these are known as mineralocorticoids that is because they affect the mineral homeostasis. Okay. The electrolyte homeostasis is mainly controlled by this hormones that is why these are known as mineralocorticoids. The middle zone is known as the zona fasciculata, fascicle means little bundle. So, this is the widest region as you can see it is extending from here till here. So, it is the widest of all the three. This is the first region that is the second region and that is the third region. So, as you can see this region is widest of all the three zones right. So, here the cells are arranged in long straight columns. Okay. So, if we can zoom it, it will be more clearer. So, as you can see the cells are arranged in the form of long columns. Okay, and this particular layer or this particular zone it secretes the hormones called as glucocorticoids okay, and the most important out of these is cortisol. Okay, now, why these are known as glucocorticoids that is because they affect the glucose homeostasis. Okay, so, these are um, helping in the maintenance of the glucose homeostasis in the body that is why these are known as glucocorticoids corticoids. Then the cells in the inner zone, the inner zone is known as zona reticularis, reticule means network. So, these are arranged in branching cords okay. and these 
synthesize a small amount of weak androgens andro means a man ok so these are the steroid hormones which are produced by this particular region and these have masculinizing effects now coming to the hormones which are produced by these uh, three regions or yeah, the three zones okay, coming to the first type of hormone that is mineralocorticoids so the most abundant type of mineralocorticoid which is released is the aldosterone okay, which is secreted by the zona glomerulosa okay, that is the outermost layer so this is the major mineralocorticoid which is produced and secreted by these cells okay now the main function of this particular hormone is to regulate the homeostasis of two mineral ions that is the sodium ions and the potassium ions also it helps in adjusting the blood pressure as well as the blood volume if at all it is altered Okay, so, also another action of this particular hormone is that it promotes the excretion of the H plus ion in the urine. So, as a result of this H plus ion means what? It contributes to the acidity of the body, right? So, when there is high amount of these H plus ion, what, what can happen? A condition called acidosis can get precipitated, right? <coughs> that is the blood <coughs> pH if it falls below 7.35 okay, as we have seen uh, the pH okay, the importance of the pH and the regulation of this pH by the kidneys we have seen the role of kidneys in regulation of the pH so if the pH goes below normal okay, that is below the neutral level it can precipitate a condition called as acidosis Okay, which may be due to the increase in the amount of H plus ions in the body that is the acids in the body. So, this particular hormone aldosterone it also promotes the excretion of this H plus ions in the urine thereby it helps in reducing the acidity within the body. So, let us see how exactly the release of this hormone is controlled and what are the actions which are produced. Okay. Now, <coughs> as we have considered under the urinary system as well the renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway RAA pathway. So, the main stimuli for this particular system is the dehydration. So, when there is low levels of fluids in the body or if there is sodium ion deficiency or hemorrhage that is the excessive loss of blood from the body. So, blood volume will get reduced. Okay, so, in these three situations it can activate this particular pathway okay, which involves the hormone aldosterone. So, let us see how it helps in bringing back the homeostasis within the body. So, by these particular conditions the homeostasis within the body will get disrupted right. So, under all these conditions what will happen to your blood volume obviously it will decrease right the blood volume will decrease okay when there is sodium deficiency less amount of water is also reabsorbed right from the kidneys that is what we have seen. So, this will result in all these three situations will result in decrease in the blood volume. So, when the blood volume decreases what happens to your blood pressure as we have seen that it is directly proportional right to your blood pressure. So, if the blood volume decreases the blood pressure will also decrease. So, this decrease in the blood pressure this will be sensed by the juxtaglomerular cells in your kidneys. Remember the, remember the juxtaglomerular cells these are the modified smooth muscles in the walls of the afferent arterioles. So, they will sense this change in the blood pressure lowered blood pressure. So, it will secrete the enzyme renin. Okay, now, as a result of this the levels of renin in the blood will increase okay, and this renin in turn will convert angiotensinogen which is a plasma protein which is produced by liver. So, this angiotensinogen is converted into angiotensin 1. Okay, so, that is the decapeptide and uh, 
as a result of this the angiotensin 1 levels it will get increased right ok. So, as these levels increase it will start flowing into your circulatory system ok and specially in the cells of the lungs okay, there is an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme or AC. So, this will convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. So, as a result of this what will happen to the levels of angiotensin 2 it will increase. So, this angiotensin 2 in turn will stimulate the adrenal cortex to secrete more and more aldosterone. So, it will act on your adrenal cortex to increase the levels of aldosterone ok. So, these increased aldosterone levels they will reach out throughout the body right. So, it will reach the kidney as well. Now, in kidneys what is the action of aldosterone? It increases the reabsorption of sodium. Now, when the sodium is re reabsorbed along with it what else will get reabsorbed? Of course, water will also get reabsorbed by the process of osmosis. So, as a result of this what will happen? Sodium is conserved and water also is conserved right. So, less of water is lost in the urine. So, as a result of this what has happened now? It has corrected this deficiency right. Sodium levels have increased and because of the increase in the water conservation dehydration problem is also solved correct. Now, apart from the increase in the sodium and water reabsorption, it also increases the secretion of potassium ions and the H plus ions in the urine ok. So, secretion is increased that means what it is getting excreted out in the urine right. So, as a result of this what will happen to the levels of these two ions in the body? Yes, they will get reduced ok. So, it is promoting the loss of H plus ions. So, the acidity is reduced right. So, acidosis can be combated ok. Then due to the increased sodium and water reabsorption it will result in increase in the blood volume correct more and more water is conserved. So, that will result in increase in the blood volume. Now, when the blood volume increases what happens to the blood pressure? It will also increase right till it comes back to normal. Now, apart from that directly the angiotensin 2 will also have direct effect on the blood pressure that is it produces the vasoconstriction of the arterioles. So, as the vasoconstriction of the arterioles take place what will happen? it will result in the increase in the BP right. We have seen under the regulation of the BP vasoconstriction okay. if any hormone or any substance it causes vasoconstriction it will result in rise in BP right because the size or the diameter of this blood vessel will decrease as a result of vasoconstriction. So, it will result in increase in the blood pressure ok. <coughs> now, apart from the angiotensin 2 there is one more condition which can increase the secretion of the aldosterone. So, no doubt angiotensin 2 is controlling the release, but apart from that even the increase in the potassium ions in the extracellular fluid that can also cause the release of aldosterone. Now, why this is happening? What is the function of aldosterone? it causes excretion of the potassium into the urine right ok. So, whenever there is rise in the potassium ion concentration it will stimulate the release of aldosterone by this adrenal cortex. So, what it what, what it will do? It will act in the kidneys to excrete more and more potassium ions. So, their levels will be decreased it will come back to normal and opposite action will be seen when the blood potassium levels are decreased. So, when these potassium levels will decrease in the extracellular fluid what will happen? It will act on the adrenal cortex to decrease the release of the aldosterone. So, what will happen? When the aldosterone levels are decreased the potassium excretion okay, that 
the secretion which takes place that will get inhibited. So, potassium levels will be conserved. So, it will bring it back to normal. Okay. So, this is how the regulation of the secretion of the aldosterone will take place and the next hormone which is produced by adrenal cortex is glucocorticoids. Okay. Now, these glucocorticoids they mainly regulate the metabolism and resistance to the stress. Okay. This is carried out by the glucocorticoids. Now, the glucocorticoids include hormones like cortisol, this is also known as hydrocortisone. Second hormone is corticosterone and cortisone, out of which this hormone is the most abundant one that is about 95 percent of the glucocorticoid activity that is due to this particular cortisol. Okay, so, which layer is producing glucocorticoids? Yes, it is the zona fasciculata that is the middle zone. Now, let us see how exactly the release of the glucocorticoid is controlled. Now, supposing if due to some stimulus the homeostasis is disrupted okay, that is there is decrease in the levels of glucocorticoid in the blood. As a result of this decreased levels of glucocorticoids mainly the cortisol hormone. Okay, so, it will stimulate the neurosecretory cells in the hypothalamus. Remember the hypothalamus it secretes several releasing and inhibiting hormones which control the secretions of the anterior pituitary right. So, due to decrease in the levels of glucocorticoids in the blood it will act on the neurosecretory cells in hypothalamus to secrete more and more corticotropin releasing hormone CRH. So, it is one of the releasing hormone which acts on the anterior pituitary to promote the release of the ACTH adrenocorticotropic hormone. Okay, this is also known as corticotropin right. Okay, so, CRH that is corticotropin releasing hormone it will stimulate the release of the ACTH. So, as a result of this what will happen the levels of the ACTH will increase. So, this ACTH will act on the cells of zona fasciculata in the adrenal cortex and it will stimulate it to produce more and more glucocorticoids. So, till it comes back to normal. So, whatever levels had lowered now they will come back to normal. So, it will help in increasing the levels of glucocorticoids. Okay. Apart from this another stimulus is the physical or emotional stress. Okay, now, as uh, the glucocorticoid levels come back to normal, it will what it will do? Due to feedback mechanism, it will inhibit the release of the CRH from the hypothalamus. This in turn will stop acting on your anterior pituitary. So, what will happen? The release of ACTH is also reduced and as a result of this, its influence of on the zona fasciculata that will also get reduced and the levels of glucocorticoid will come back to normal. Okay. So, this is the feedback mechanism which controls the release of glucocorticoids. Okay. So, its level will control its release by acting on the hypothalamus as well as the pituitary. Okay. Now, coming to the actions of the glucocorticoids. The first action is protein breakdown. So, it increases the rate of protein breakdown mainly in the muscle fibers. As a result of this what will happen when protein breakdown takes place what will be released? Yes, it is made up of amino acids. So, amino acids will be released in the blood stream. So, these can be utilized by body cells to synthesize new proteins or for the production of the ATP. Next action is glucose formation. Okay, now, these glucocorticoids they act on the liver cells okay, to promote the process called as gluconeogenesis. Remember gluconeogenesis it is production of the glucose from the amino acids and the lactic acid. So, these will get converted into glucose 
So, these will be utilized by neurons or other cells for ATP production. Okay. Next effect is lipolysis, glucocorticoid stimulates the lipolysis. So, breakdown of the fats will take place, right. So, breakdown of the triglycerides will take place. So, what will be released? Fatty acids, right, triglyceride, they contain three fatty acid chain attached to the glycerol, right. So, from the adipose tissue, these free fatty acids will be released into the blood. Next action is resistance to stress, ok. So, this particular hormones, these are released in a stressful situation. Whenever there is any stressful situation, it can be combated with the help of this particular hormone. So, it helps in combating the stressful situations like exercise, fasting, fright, okay, that is if you are afraid, temperature extremes, very high or very low temperatures, high altitude, bleeding, infections, surgery, trauma or any kind of disease. Okay. So, all in all of these situation, these will create a stressful situation in your body, right. So, homeostasis might get disrupted. So, to combat this particular situation, the additional glucose is supplied by the liver cells. Okay. So, the tissues are provided with the ready source of the ATP to combat because high amount of ATP might be required in these situations. Okay. Apart from that, even glucocorticoids, these make the blood vessels more sensitive to other hormones which cause the vasoconstriction. So, as a result of this blood pressure will increase. The actions of other hormones which result in vasoconstriction, their sensitivities increase. So, it will result in rise in the BP. So, this particular situation is helpful in cases of severe blood loss okay, which will result in drop in the BP. <coughs> then the next action is anti-inflammatory effect. So, glucocorticoids they have anti-inflammatory effects by inhibiting the WBCs okay, which are responsible for triggering the inflammatory responses. Okay. So, because of this actually they retard the tissue repair. Okay. So, wound healing will get slowed down, okay. but these particular glucocorticoids they are very good anti-inflammatory agents. So, they can be utilized in inflammatory disorders like rheumatoid arthritis. Next action is depression of the immune response. Okay, so, high doses of these glucocorticoids can depress the immune response. What is the immune response? It is developed whenever any foreign substance enter into your body, right? So, it acts as an antigen and antibodies are produced by your body, ok. So, for that matter, glucocorticoids, they are quite effective in the organ transplantation. What do you mean by organ transplant? So, whenever any person is in need of some organ, supposing if organ failure has taken place, ok, say for example, the <coughs> kidneys have failed. So, if you find a donor, ok, that donor can donate one of his kidney, right, or if the brain dead person, they can donate their organs, right, eyes can be donated, heart can be donated, kidneys can be donated. Okay. So, in such situation when a organ from another person is transplanted to your body, will your body accept it? Is it your organ? No, it is a foreign substance right for your body. <coughs> so, in such situation rejection may take place. So, your body will identify it as foreign and it will start destroying that organ. So, to avoid that glucocorticoids can be given when transplantation is done it will prevent this rejection by suppressing the immune system. <coughs> then the next type of hormone is the androgens. Okay, so, these are secreted by the zona reticularis of the adrenal cortex. So, it is secreted in a very small amount and these are weak androgens. And the most important androgen which is secreted by the adrenal gland is dehydroepiandrosterone DHEA. So, this particular hormone, this have several functions in males as well as 
in females ok. So, generally after puberty in males the androgen testosterone this is released in much larger quantities from the testes. So, as such the role of androgens which are produced by the adrenal glands they are not very much significant they do not play any significant role in the males much of the roles, but in case of females this play very important role like they promote the libido that is sex drive. They also are converted into estrogen these are feminizing sex steroid by the other tissues. Then after the menopause the ovaries they do not secrete any estrogens ok. So, it is this particular hormone which will get converted into estrogen and that is a source of estrogen in such females that is after the menopause has taken place ok. Then the androgens also stimulate the growth of axillary and the pubic hair both in the boys as well as the girls ok. Now, the control of the release of this adrenal androgen it is not very well understood, but it is thought to be controlled by the ACTH that is adrenocorticotropic hormone can increase the release of the androgens ok. So, this is to do with the adrenal cortex coming to adrenal medulla that is the inner region of the adrenal gland it is known as adrenal medulla. So, this adrenal medulla it is actually the modified sympathetic ganglion of the ANS that is autonomic nervous system. So, autonomic nervous system you have already studied right it is divided into two sympathetic and the parasympathetic system right it is a part of peripheral nervous system ok. So, this medulla it is actually a modified ganglion now what is this ganglion what is ganglia yes it is the group of cell bodies where that is very important group of cell bodies in the CNS these are known as nuclei and the group of cell bodies in the PNS these are known as ganglia right ok. So, this is actually a sympathetic ganglion it is a modified sympathetic ganglion. So, it is derived from the same embryonic tissues as develop into all the other sympathetic ganglia, ok. But these are slightly modified in that they do not have any exons. So, these ganglia this this is actually the group of cell bodies right. So, cell bo from the cell bodies what do emerge the exon there are several processes right and the longest one is exon. But these cell bodies which are present in this region they do not have any exons ok. So, they are just the cluster of the cell bodies which are found around the large blood vessels within this particular region ok. Now, usually what does the neuron release? The neuron release the neurotransmitters right, but the adrenal medulla which comprises of the modified ganglia they secrete the hormones ok. So, the hormone producing cells which are present over here these are known as chromaffin cells chrome means color and fn means affinity for ok. So, these particular cells in this region these are innervated by the sympathetic preganglionic neuron. So, obviously a ganglion in this particular region they will have preganglionic neuron and from this will be arising the post ganglionic neuron right. But now these are modified cells right. So, there is no exon which is emerging from this no post ganglionic neuron is present over here. But these are innervated by the preganglionic neurons, the sympathetic preganglionic neurons, ok. So, they 
will be the under the influence of the sympathetic system. So, immediate release of the hormone will take place. Now, coming to the hormones which are produced by this region. So, there are two major hormones which are produced by this particular region. The dopamine is produced in a very low amount. Okay. So, the two major hormones are epinephrine and norepinephrine. Any is the accepted short form over here and epinephrine it is also known as adrenaline and norepinephrine is also known as noradrenaline. If you all can recall, we had considered these under the neurotransmitters as well. Okay. So, these are acting as neurotransmitters as well as hormones in the body. right? Okay. Now, the chromaffin cells are producing both these hormones, but the amount which is produced, it is quite variable that is epinephrine. 80 percent of epinephrine is produced and just 20 percent of the norepinephrine is produced. Okay, so, as these hormones are released, the sympathetic responses will be produced in the body. Okay, so, these hormones are mainly secreted in the stressful situation like during exercise, the impulses from the hypothalamus will stimulate the sympathetic preganglionic neurons. So, which in turn will act on chromaffin cells to secrete more and more epinephrine and norepinephrine. So, these are usually responsible for a fight or flight response. So, whenever any stressful situation is produced in the body, they will try to combat this situation okay, by increasing the heart rate and the force of contraction of the heart. Okay, so, these two hormones they will be responsible for increase in the cardiac output right heart rate and force of contraction both are increased. So, output will also increase right which in turn will increase is the blood pressure. So, also they will increase the blood flow to the vital organs like heart, liver, skeletal muscles, adipose tissues okay, also they will dilate the airways of the lungs. Also, they will increase the levels of glucose and fatty acid. So, all these conditions will help your body to sustain in a stressful situation within the body. Okay. So, to summarize the hormones which are produced by the adrenal glands, the cortex, adrenal cortex secretes the hor three, three hormones that is mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids and the androgen. So, mineralocorticoids, what is the control of secretion? Yes, that is increased blood potassium levels and also angiotensin 2 stimulates the secretion. And what are the actions? It increases the blood levels of sodium ions and the water, water conservation also take place. Also, it decreases the levels of potassium ion. Glucocorticoids, their secretion it is stimulated by ACTH, the CRH which in turn will promote the ACTH secretion in, uh, in, in the stressful situation okay, or low levels of the glucocorticoids. So, this particular hormone it increases the protein breakdown, stimulates the gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, resistance to stress inflammation anti inflammatory action it has also it depresses the immune response. Then androgens ACTH will stimulate the secretion of this particular hormone. So, it will assist in the growth of axillary and pubic hair in both male as well as females. In case of females it will contribute the, to the libido that is the sexual drive and also it is the source of estrogen after the menopause wherein ovaries stop secreting this particular hormone. Then the adrenal medulla hormones, these are epinephrine and norepinephrine produced by the chromaffin cells. So, what stimulates the secretion? It is the sympathetic preganglionic neurons. When they are stimulated, it will cause the release of acetylcholine, which will act as a transmitter and stimulate the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine. And the actions are same as that of the stimulation of the sympathetic division of the ANS right during mainly the stressful situation. Okay. So, with this we finish the adrenal gland which is divided into two regions adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla which produce different set of 
hormones. So, this is the reference. Thank you for watching.